what time it is. Drum roll, please. It's memory verse time. And today's memory verse is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 26. So, do you have your Bibles already? Let's read it together. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I, the Lord, am your healer. Pretty short, right? So now, let's do it with actions. Are you ready, kids? Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I, the Lord, am your healer. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Well done, kids. Remember, it is good to keep the Word of God in our hearts, not just into our minds, but to actually practice it. So, are you guys ready for our Bible lesson today? First, stay in your seat, obey, watch, and listen. Hmm, I'm supposed to be joined by someone to share to you today's Bible story. I wonder where Teacher Aldrin actually is. Hi, Teacher Aldrin. Teacher Aldrin. Kids, can you help me call Teacher Aldrin? In the count of three, let's all shout Teacher Aldrin. Okay? In three, two, one. One, Teacher Aldrin! Oh, oops, I'm sorry. It's just that, remember the guy I told you before? The one who is being mean to one of my friends? Well, apparently, he got himself chicken pox. What? Well, he deserves it, doesn't he? Well, you know, Teacher Aldrin, today's Bible lesson is pretty similar about that guy, and his name is Naaman. He didn't get exactly along with people, but they were still nice to him. So, let me tell you today's Bible lesson. In the land of Syria, there lived a mighty man by the name of Naaman. He was a strong warrior that commanded the Syrian army. Naaman fought many battles and he was a courageous man. But there is one thing that made him vulnerable, and that he was a leper. Teacher Aldrin, do you know what leprosy is? No. Well, leprosy was a very, very horrible and painful skin disease. The disease began slowly creeping, and it would eventually turn the person in a disfigured and infected man. In Bible times, there was no cure for leprosy. It can easily spread from one person to another. Often, people with leprosy cannot even live with their own family members because of the fear that they might get infected too. Even though it was a very, very nasty disease, it did not stop Naaman from going from one country to another and taking people as slaves. You see, it turns out that Naaman wasn't a very nice guy at all. Naaman's army attacked God's people, the Israelites, and took them as slaves. What a mean thing to do. The Israelites must have hated Naaman for what he did. Well, if somebody took you a captive and made you a slave, you probably wouldn't feel so sad about him. But one girl did. In Naaman's house, there lived a little girl from Israel and had to be taken as a household slave. One day, she spoke with Naaman's wife and told her of the prophet who lived in Israel and that he could heal Naaman. But back then, there was no cure for leprosy, right? It would be a complete waste of time to go. That's right. In fact, Naaman had seen 
every single doctor and has taken up every single medicine, but it didn't cure him. The prophet Elisha was his last hope. So when Naaman heard this, he rushed to go to the king of Syria and ask for permission to go from Syria to Israel. He wanted to find that prophet and finally be healed from being a leper. In the meantime, the king of Syria wrote a letter to the king of Israel asking the permission for Naaman to be healed. But when the king of Israel read the letter, he was very, very confused. He thought that the king of Syria had evil intentions to trick him. The prophet Elijah heard the news. He corrected the king of Israel and asked that Naaman be sent to him. And so it happened. Through a messenger, Elisha told Naaman to go wash seven times in the Jordan River and that finally he would be healed. Wait, wait, wait. What a strange instruction. It is certainly not something a doctor would prescribe as a cure for leprosy. So, how did Naaman respond to this? Naaman was furious for one thing. He thought that Elisha would be meeting him in person. And plus, he wasn't sure about this process. I mean, how could the Jordan River help him when he tried every single medicine? And why come all the way to Israel when there are a lot of beautiful rivers in Syria. Naaman's servants rushed to his side and begged him to obey the words of the prophet. So, Naaman swallowed his pride and went to the Jordan River and to do exactly as what Elisha has commanded. There in the Jordan River, he washed seven times and after the seventh time, a miraculous wonder happened. Naaman was finally healed, as exactly foretold by Elisha. What a great story! Thank you, Teacher Andre, for that. Well, personally, I think Naaman didn't deserve to be healed because he was rude to the Israelites. But God blessed the heart and soul of that servant girl who is being nice to him anyways. For me, she's the hero of the story. I think I need to message my friend and ask how he is. What a great idea, Teacher Aldrin. I may not be able to heal him, but I can still be a good friend and point him to our God who heals. I'll be going now, Teach. What a great idea, Teacher Aldrin. Well, goodbye for now, Teacher Aldrin, and keep safe, kids. Mm -hmm. As a result of the kindness the servant girl showed to Naaman, God's power came over Naaman and healed him. Because he believed, he was healed. Naaman went to thank Elisha and declared that there was no indeed other God that can heal except the God of Israel, our Jehovah Rapha. Can you say that name again with me? Jehovah Rapha. Rapha. It's the name of God that means, my God is my healer. And that's our big idea for the week. Let's do it again. Jehovah Rapha. My God is my healer.